Welcome to Virtue's brand of wrestling on BigVito.com, the Big Vito brand. I am Virtue here with episode number 19. My Denver Broncos are 2-0. They came back and beat the Raiders in a big divisional game. Yeah, it's early. I got the Ultimate Warrior WrestleMania New Orleans logo shirt on. And this is going to be a simple Virtues brand of wrestling. They usually are. I'm going to briefly recap my thoughts on WWE, Hell in a Cell, and then I want to talk about some trials and tribulations from the small indie event that I did this past weekend in Cleveland, Ohio, UXWA Maximum Effort. So first, WWE Hell in a Cell. So before the event even happened, photos were leaking online. They painted the cell red. And the smarks and the marks, they were all bitching and complaining. Who cares? Who cares if it looked like the McDonald's Playhouse? Who cares if it looked like the TNA lockdown cage? They painted it red. So what? The old monkey bar cage <laughs> used to be blue. Who cares? So that out of the way. The event happened. And normally, I, I dislike a lot of WWE creative, but I love the talent having to work with crappy creative. And I battle a lot of people that are always disgusted with WWE, but then they blame the talent. Look, I, I never have an issue with people – complain about booking but when they start saying the talent is not talented and sucks that's where i have the problem when they try to hijack the shows we've i've talked about this over and over again that's where i really have the issues so i put wwe events over probably more than the most you know most people a lot of that has to do with what i how i see the performers working um, creative always brings down, I, I don't think I've given anything an A plus or an A. Um, the best grade I've given are A minuses. And it usually takes something that the smarts hate, like Roman going over or something like that. And the, the more stuff like that happens, then the more I, the higher I rate the show uh, because it's entertaining me, right? If you get what you want, aren't you supposed to like it? But we are in an era of complainers. So overall, I give – this was tough because I actually splurged and gave SummerSlam an A- minus because Roman won. And the way that they swerved the fans with the fake cash-in with Braun, totally not allowing the fans to hijack the show, I gave SummerSlam an A-. minus. <laughs> but with that said, I'm going to go ahead and give Hell in a Cell a B-. minus. Still an above-average grade, and I thought about giving it like a CC+. Plus, but I'm going to give it a B minus. So the highlights, um, I'm not going to go over every match, but the first cage match, which again, I disagreed with, I thought Joe and AJ should have been in the cage, but the fact they put Jeff and um, Orton in there, I knew Orton was going to go over and he did. That match to me still didn't need the cage. Yes, Jeff went up there and swung and then came crashing down onto an empty table with his midsection. That was the final blow. He's done a lot better, but at this stage of his career, that was a little bit more of a safer spot. They played it off like he couldn't. Well, Orton ended up pinning him after that. The ear, you know, going through the gauge with the screwdriver was fantastic. I, you know, that was safe. He's got the little gauge circle in there, putting a the screwdriver in there, twisting cartilage. You can make it look a lot worse than it really is. And they did that. And that was the great psychology of this match. But the problem is it was in the cage. So we're thinking Jeff's jumping off the cage somehow, and it totally took away, from my opinion, the screwdriver spot. That match should have been not in the cage, and then that screwdriver spot would have been, boom, right there front and center. So, again, not that these guys didn't do their work. Jeff took the bump, but I'm just saying little technicalities. Come on, this match did not need the cage. Let's fast forward to Joe and AJ so it ended with the Coquina clutch, but AJ rolled him up, and they did the whole ref counted three on Joel's shoulders down, 
but AJ tapped out just before the three count. So technically now Joe is protected. He's got his beef. Hey, I should have won the match, but it was on the rest blind side to tap out, and he counted three. This match, to me, that's why they didn't put it in the cage because they wanted a screwy finish so they could protect Joe, but also still keep the title on AJ. Let's face it, AJ's on the cover of WWE 2K19, and he's chasing CM Punk's reign of days which modern day I think is the longest, not counting Brock's universal title reign, and Vince McMahon probably wants AJ to pass CM Punk. Whatever. But I need a Big Vito brand shirt. It says Virtue, Big Vito brand, Virtue, whatever. I'm drinking Sprite today. Sorry, they're not giving us any money, Noel. But I need some bubbly. All right. So... I like the match. It would have been better in the cage. The saga continues. Joe gets a rematch. Crazy. Uh, Charlotte tapping to Becky. Becky becoming the SmackDown Women's Champion shocked me. I like it. The fact that Charlotte tapped, interesting booking. But what I do hope now going forward is that Becky continues to – get pushed as this heel and they do everything in their power to be snarky back to the smarks. I want her to be a heel champion, right? I don't, I don't want them to give in to the smarks. I hate that. If the smarks aren't fat, you know, smart enough and they should be to go along. They really like Becky. They should boo her support her. They can cheer her in secret. No, but we want our voice to be heard. Yay, Becky. So that was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I did also enjoy the fact that they allowed Ronda Rousey to go over. She went 12, according to Wikipedia, 12 minutes and five seconds against Alexa, which kind of helped Alexa because you didn't want her to get squashed again. I mean, for Pete's sake, she's facing Trish at Evolution at the end of October. So, of course, they allowed um, Ronda to retain, but I liked that it was a 12-minute match. And for the most part, it wasn't god-awful, which I know some people might say that, but I, I was sports entertained. So, I, you know, props to the, the two uh, women's matches. What else? The, the main event. Uh, oh, the tag match was fantastic. That, that was a fantastic match. Um, I really – Seth took the pin, but it was a unique way they did it, so kind of – protected him. I mean, he's still the Intercontinental Champion, and they're keeping the titles on Ziggler and McIntyre. Um, the one thing I, you know, I did like that match, but that's, those are the type of matches that the smart crowd want all the time, right? And I'm, I'm looking like one. I got the neck beard going on, so I guess if I, I preach into the choir, I'm morphing into one, whatever. But it was a fantastic match. I always cringe because I used to love those type of matches, the ones that were the show stealers. But now knowing that's what everybody looks for, it's like I like the match, but I, I just kind of want to secretly like that. But it was it was it was good work. Well, excellent finish too, by the way. So with that said, main event time. Braun and Roman, right? My problem was, what the hell did they do to each other? All of a sudden, they were out for like seven minutes to allow Ziggler and McIntyre to come out there, and then Ambrose and Rollins, and then all the shenanigans up on top of the cage, and then we know the big cage spot, which totally took from, you know, they allowed Rollins and Ziggler to take that bump off the cage down into the Spanish announce table or whatever it was, and that totally took shine off of Braun and Roman. Sure, okay, and not just that. I suggested, and, and when I saw the cage red, I'm like, oh, my God, they're maybe going to bring Demon Finn Balor in here, and he's going to be the one that kind of helps the shield out. And I expected the whole, you know, Corbin to send the whole heel locker room, just trying to get everything out there for Roman to lose the title, and then Demon Balor shows up. And, you know, I I didn't expect the no contest, which is weird at the end of a Hell, of, hell in a Cell match. I did expect Roman to go over Braun, but for them to do something – where Braun was protected, but lo and behold, what do we get? Not Demon Finn Balor. We get Brock Lesnar. 
So I'm not mad. I mean, I want to see guys like Finn Balor as the demon gimmick. <laughs> Hear me out. As the demon gimmick. And Elias and guys like that, I want to see them get pushed. But Vince McMahon sees Braun, sees Roman. And the fact that all the in the know thought Brock was done, he's going to UFC, his contract's done, he shows back up. I like that after I sat and I thought about it and I slept on it. I had some issues to take care of last night, um, so this video is going to be up just a little bit later than normal. But I like it because now Vince told, you know, basically he's telling the Smarks, you don't know what's going on. You thought Brock was gone for a while. Nope, he's still in this main event picture. And you know what? It makes sense because at SummerSlam, Roman beat him, but Braun was out there and got into the match, basically kind of somewhat distracting Lesnar, and Roman took advantage, and they booked Roman over. It makes sense for Brock to want to come back and why these two guys are down and out, come in, tear down the cage door, just like Kane did with Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. History always repeats itself. But have Brock come out and destroy them and basically say, I'm still here, I want my rematch, just by basically ending the show where we don't have a decisive winner. And to me, people should give Brock the big heel heat for this. You know, I mean, yeah, we could say Braun's a heel with Ziggler McIntyre, and then Roman's supposed to be the babyface with the Shield. Boo Lesnar, he's back now working his part-time schedule right in the main event, which is taking it from one of your indie darlings. This is the prime example now to truly give Brock Lesnar natural heel heat. So I like that. But I did not like Jeff and Orton being in the cage. Um... I did not like the fact that the main event did not have a finish. Like, I thought maybe Roman should have still pinned Braun. But just those type of little nuances. I, I did not like the fact that the way they did the tag match, with, which was awesome, but they still had to get all four of those guys, the, the Raw tag title match. They still had to get all those guys out there to take away from Braun and Roman in the cage and all those shenanigans and then Brock. It was just too busy, too much was going on. So those type of things automatically made me think, no, it's definitely not any type of an A, A minus show at all. And, uh, you know, the more that I thought about it, I would have liked to also see Becky be even more heelish after her title win, maybe cut a promo on the, on the uh, mic right there and let her shoot on the marks in the crowd. But all in all, I will give it. Some people probably really crapped on this based on what I was looking at on social media. Some people really gave this pay-per-view a bad grade. I saw some people that really enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead and say B minus, um, slightly above average. I probably would have gave it like maybe a B plus, maybe even an A minus if a few things were tweaked, um, and especially if AJ and Joe were in the cage. And like, like I said, it's just a nitpick. But I know I tend to give higher grades than most anyway, so whatever. All right, so that's my WWE hell in a cell. I almost said TLC. I don't think they're doing those anymore. Um, by the way, it is Monday night. I have two fantasy football matchups that are on the line. I'm in four leagues. Last week, I won three out of my four leagues. The one league that I lost, I was up against one the one team that scored more than me out of 12 figures, right? Um, this week in two matchups, I already won one and I already lost another. So I'm one and one, but I have two matchups that are pending based on Monday night's foot tonight's Monday night football, where it's going to be the, I believe the Seattle Seahawks at the Chicago bears. So I'm favored in both of the leagues you know, with the situations that I am keeping my fingers crossed. I want to go three out of four leagues again. Week two, but I don't know if the fantasy gods are on my side. But nonetheless, indie wrestling. I was at a show, UXWA, Maximum Effort, on Saturday. Um, somewhat of a, you know, sponsor to the show that's involved. You know, I, I, I was, I had my army versus um, the guy named Razor Sharp and his team. I was a six-man tag team match. And we want to bring people in, right? You do an indie show. You want as many as you can get. You know, if you only have 40, 50 people, you're losing money. 
and we weren't getting too many online sale tickets. And so a couple of weeks ago, I raised the stakes. I said, if Team Razor Sharp wins, he gets me in the ring for five minutes at the next event. If Team Virtue wins, he's got to walk away from UXWA. We never had the intent to have him lose and be gone from UXWA. It was going to be me, my team, ultimately losing so he can get me in the ring for five minutes, right? So therefore, yes, you don't put someone's career on the line unless it's one-on-one, -on -one, but the fact is we were only doing that for the hype. He was always going to get me in the ring at the next show for five minutes. We had There's too many cooks in the kitchen at this indie show. People that aren't part of it anymore, right, as a co-promoter coming in and showing up and commanding and demanding respect and shooting down people's ideas like that. I've been doing this for years, so therefore I know it's not a bad idea. Look, I don't mind if somebody says, Virtue, your idea, it can be a little bit better and here's why. But when people get condescending with me, I'm coming right back at them. And I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, – I kind of think I know what I'm doing, and the fact is probably in, the le in less than a year or two, I'm going to buy a brand new wrestling ring and own it, right? And if UXWA doesn't work with me as a co-promoter, I'll start my own. I'll get my promoter's license, and then I'll pay my wrestlers what they deserve. I'll do it in a new area where we can draw, because in Cleveland – it's cluster F with so many crappy promotions that it's, you know, AIW, okay, they draw. Well, they spend the money. They bring in Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, Arn Anderson, Ricky Steamboat, Jeff Jarrett, okay? We're not on that type of budget, and we want to build the younger local talent. But that's the problem with indie wrestling. When there's too many cooks in the kitchen and it's all ego, everybody knows more, I'm trained, this and that. Okay, first of all, if I'm working a full length length match, you better believe I better be a trained wrestler. If I'm putting my money in as like a co-sponsor, as just like a promoter of the segment that I'm in, then I can pretty much put my input in there, right? Because my I have a little bit of cash into it, which is helping the other guy out. And if you disagree with my vision of the match, again, that's fine. Be more respectful. And we're, you know, we were that term disrespect and respect was getting thrown around. I'm to blame too, to a point, but condescension, I will eat it up and spit it back out at you like a ball of fire. So that's the thing. When you do this indie wrestling, <clears throat> you perform the same way, whether you have 30 people out there, 60, 90, 200, 500, right? The way the stipulation of the match went is if my army won, Razor Sharp was gone from UXWA. And we had an initial finish of the match where a baseball bat got used. The ref didn't see it. One, two, three. My team was victorious. Okay? We celebrated. Razor Sharp's gone, right? And all of a sudden, we had an acting general manager came out and said, oh, no, 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 no. We saw what happened. But this continue, you know, just like you would in any wrestling promotion. And the match continued. I still had the baseball bat in my hand, and it looked like we were still going to try to do whatever we had to do to win. Ultimately, Team Razor Sharp ended up winning. He got He's going to get me in the ring for five minutes at the next event. And then just to one-up me even more, the general manager said, hey, you're even going to have a special referee because Virtue, if you don't, go through with this for those five minutes, you're gone from UXWA now. And then the referee that came out was the same referee that was a special ringside enforcer that counted three to make sure my team lost after we were trying to pull shenanigans again at the previous show. I thought he was just the one and done. Well, he comes back to entrance music. His name is Alex the Kid. Fantastic guy. And he's now going to ref this five-minute match I have to do with Razor Sharp. And you know what? He's got a family and friends that want to come and see him live his dream as a referee. And it's going to happen. And that's what it, doing small indie wrestling is all about, getting as many people 
in there as you can. I'm not booking the whole show. I'm just working on this special attraction feud with Razor Sharp, Virtue and Razor Sharp, and this referee who's living his dream, Alex the Kid. It's beautiful. And you know why it's beautiful? And I can't wait for this next show. And I'm going to. I'm going to last those five minutes, by the way, because his parents came over to me, the mother, at the end of the show, when it was over, and she was crying, thanking me, which extends to the other guy, you know, Razor Sharp, and, yeah, you know, everybody else that uh, we allowed this to happen, thanked us. And that is what it's all about. The egos, the bitching and the moaning, the respect me, I've done this forever. That doesn't mean shit when my agenda was always to have this Alex be a referee in a wrestling organization. And even though it's just small-time indie, it's a big deal to him. It's a big deal to us to have him. And therefore, the way we've done this, Razor Sharp's career on the line versus me for five minutes in the ring – it made absolute sense. The story still will be delivered all the way to the very end, even if it means I'm going to get my ass kicked for five minutes and he's going to be there counting three, right? That's what it's all about. Check the egos at the door. If you disagree, just be more respectful. But what people don't realize how condescending they are because there are some carnies in this business, a lot of them. It's probably there's more carnies than not. So therefore, the defense mechanism on everybody is through the roof. Now, backstage with the wrestlers, the workers, they were all fantastic. I'll, there was a guy named Bouncer, right, in our match. He knew, like, if he comes out saying this isn't going to work and here's why, let's do it this way. I'm a vet. We listen, right? That's that's what you do. You listen to the vets, Okay. The locker room with the wrestlers and the it was tremendous. Working with Alex and his family, getting him to be able to do this was tremendous. Working with Jeff, razor sharp, has been tremendous. But there are other people in that bubble where there was a little private meeting and it blew up. That's the unnecessary shit in indie wrestling that ruins it. And that's why some of these things don't grow and a fed, a fed might die off. Because the carnies or the people with the super huge egos that come in condescending because we've been doing it for a while, they just need to check those egos at the door. Okay, We're all going to want to think our ideas are the best. We're all going to want to say, no, let's do it my way. But like, if you're in a board meeting, good solid back and forth bickering you know, where it's respectful until you come to a meeting where you both agree on – that's how the world should work, but unfortunately, nope, dumb, 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 dumb. It wouldn't work for me. It wouldn't work for you. And then, and then I'm, I'm like, well, what, what have you done? You know, sure, we're struggling to draw a hundred people at these small indie shows right now, and all of a sudden you come at me saying, well, we drew 115. You're throwing away. If you were saying you were doing 300 people in a small gym, okay, you told me 115, and it only happened a couple times. Just be more respectful. And the fact is, if you end up seeing this now, you are going to hate me even more. But the fact is, last time I checked, you're not any, you're not part of this anymore. So you were there acting like you were part of it, being condescending. That's where I have the problem. So what I'm trying to tell the brand, the big veto brand here, is if you ever trained to do anything or become a promoter or anything in the indie wrestling business, just watch out because it can be volatile. But I'll tell you what, I would take all of those confrontations and disagreements and yelling and shouting and bickering and this and that. I would take all of that any day of the week when I can make a dream come true. Again, in a special attraction match. All the other matches I had nothing to do with the booking of happened as is. But did I see a pair, when a mother came over to me and thanked me and cr was crying, that means more to me than ever becoming famous doing wrestling, right? 
I know what I know when not to step on people's toes. And there you have it. So there's just trials and tribulations working, even at the smallest. Could you imagine? And Big Vito knows this because he was there in a WWE, WCW, TNA, and ECW locker room. Could you just imagine all of that at that level with big dollars on the line? Entertainment business, people. There's a lot of sharks out there. But if you can ever contribute and make a difference in one person's life, let alone a whole family, then it's worth it. So thank you, Alex the Kid. Thank you, Brandon. And thank you to all the Lozanos. And I look forward to, even that, even if this means he's going to kick my ass at the next UXWA event, I look forward to facing Razor Sharp for those five minutes with Alex the Kid as the referee. That's all I got to say. So hopefully, if you have any other questions you want want to know more, um, I'm willing to, to bury the hatchet with every, anybody. But there's people that just never want to sit down. Once they don't like you, they'll never like you. And the fact that I'm vocal and open my mouth and say what's on my mind like I just did here, respectfully, not mentioning any, any names, the heat just comes pouring on you. So, but I'm just telling you, man, my vision for everything that's went down in UXWA for the past year has led to this and a dream being made. That is what it's all about to me. That's what it should be all about to anybody that wants to try to be in this business. Um, if you, you know, you obviously want to make money and get to the big time, then you're going to obviously probably become more uptight, but it is what it is. So I could go on and on forever, but my Monday night football matchup starting, I probably won't be watching much of raw tonight. So thank you for watching virtues brand of wrestling. I tried not to shed a tear. Um, that's why I talked a little bit about the uh, tribulations and the anger of you know, the hostility that can be in a, a locker room or the front office more more or less in the indie wrestling business because if I just talked about Alex the Kid and how that all went down, I don't know if I would have been able to finish the video. So, again, thank you. Th thank you to everybody because the experience to me is priceless. Um, being in these environments, learning, it makes me be able to watch the big product on TV a little bit better knowing if it's this way, it's a small – independent you know how it kind of tra you know progresses up to the to big events like wwe with that said you know i did have someone say well we can't do t unless you're on tv you know we just book matches the fans will enjoy okay well keep doing that and then you're going to end up not being a promoter anymore because you're losing money and whereas if you're putting a product like we are on youtube sure there's nothing on tv you want a couple things that are uh, ongoing story to tell a story because believe it or not that still draws and i know in indie wrestling with the inconsistencies of being able to book the same wrestlers over and over again you can't do storylines like on tv but jesus criminy we're not doing that damn match it was just for the little story that i was involved with razor sharp plain and simple and you know why it was a great idea and i'm going to take a majority of the credit for it because a dream was made and again i don't want to i don't want to just keep harping on that and because now it's making me sound like i'm using that as my ammo against these other people so thank you thank you to everybody thank you big veto brand for allowing me to speak my mind and you putting it on your podcast and your youtube channel once again i am virtue this is virtue's brand of wrestling you can follow me on Twitter at no DQ underscore virtue. This is, again, I could just talk about this over and over again. Thank you to the Lozanos. Um, I did not do a movie of the week this week because I wanted to give that extra time to really just putting them over, putting Jeff Sharp over UXWA for allowing me to come in and making these things happen. So, 
for Big Vito, for Noel, for the Big Vito brand, I am Virtue. Thank you for watching. Hey, it's Virtue here from BigVito.com and the Big Vito brand. And I wanted to let everybody know, if you, in case you already didn't, go to ProWrestlingTees.com and search Big Vito because you will see a spread of t-shirts that are must owned. And you know what? Here is one as an example. So I hope Noel puts this on the end of some of my videos because it really makes me look like a big deal that I'm doing commercials for Big Vito's t-shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com. But seriously, folks, you know, you want to represent the Pavarotti of hard shots to the body? Seriously, no joke. You want to get color with the Big Vito and the Big Vito brand? Head on over to PWT. Everybody knows it as ProWrestlingTees.com and search Big Vito and you will be able to choose your size. And you know what? I believe once in a while they run promotions and sales. So you always want to look out for that. But anyway, I am Virtue from BigVito.com and the Big Vito brand. Thank you for listening to me.